Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Aitken from Michelle Aitken Designs and today I've been looking at 6D embroidery software. This is my first time with 6D embroidery software and I'm thrilled with some of the changes from previous editions of the um, embroidery software. So let's take a look quickly at some of the things that are new and the first thing that we'll do is we'll look at our um, our configure screen, so our 6D configure module, where you will see that you've got a few new tools. Let's just take a look at one or two of those tools now. Come here and we'll just open up our, um, our check. So this is where we can check that everything is installed correctly. And as you can see here, every module has installed correctly. Now this is a really big software um, um, download and I'd encourage you not to in fact download it at all but to get the disc from your dealer either by um, the box upgrade or by the um, upgrade disc on its own uh, and that will enable you to go through and check that you've downloaded everything correctly. It must be done in the, um, in the correct order as well. Um, this is where you can just see where um, your communication is at as well. So those are two good new features. Our thread manager has not really changed very much. So in our thread manager, of course, you've always been able to come in to you know, show all threads. And from show all threads, you can send threads across to a My Threads category. So um, as you can see, that's really nice and easy to do. You can just do that um, so simply. Not much has changed here from anyone who's used this facility in the 5D software and anyone who follows my tutorials will of course have used this to set up things like commands for um, tacking down applique and wing needles and all sorts of other special effects. Um, interesting to note that we do have uh, the DMC threads on here so if you're doing a cross stitch or whatever but as you can see loads and loads and loads of threads for you to choose from and these are available to you in all of the different modules. Interesting thing about the threads is that in order to make it to our threads list, the thread has been tested for things like colour fastness and the quality of the thread. So if you're using a thread on this list, you're reasonably well assured that the thread has passed some degree of quality control. Of course, the company that makes the software doesn't make the thread, and we all know that thread ages and can behave differently in different weather conditions. So just um, be aware of that. Always buy the best possible thread that you can afford because time wasted on poor quality thread will be something that you always regret. And let's face it, it does take time to stitch out our machine embroideries. So definitely have a look at that um, and make sure that the thread that you're purchasing has already um, gone through that testing for you. So that's, um, that's it on the threads. We're going to come now and just look at a couple of other things. As I mentioned to you um, about the sewing machine setup, you can check that when you check that first thing about making sure that everything's loaded and installed correctly. Um, here's a really interesting one. Now, some of you might be using your software on multiple computers, and you know, of course, you can do that. There's nothing uh, to stop you. you just need to attach the dongle to each computer you're using so you can only use one device at a time but it's a good idea once you've set up all of your preferences to actually back that up back that up to a USB stick and then uh, go through and um, save that backup on all of the other devices that you're using your 6D on just saves a little bit of hassle you know when you go to do something and sometimes if the preferences aren't sent up the way that you're used to you can um, you know, end up wasting a little time. So that's a really good idea. Of course, any backup is worth doing as well because you don't want to lose everything. And those of us who have had computers die in the night will attest to the fact that it's always a good idea to do a backup of some sort. So that's what that option. The last item here is, of course, your reset your modules. Goodness me, if anything goes wrong, that's what you want to do. You want to reset those modules because um, it just means that there's been a glitch somewhere along the line and things have become scrambled. It can sometimes happen with things like a Windows update or maybe you've um, bought a new, I don't know, printer or something like that and drivers are conflicted or you know, just all sorts of things can happen. So I can remember the very first time I touched computerized machine embroidery software, I managed to um, 
slide something on my screen and ended up with about a screen of one inch showing all the way down the side. So reset all modules. It's the first thing you do if you think you're in trouble. So before you call your local dealer and hit the panic button, just go reset all modules and see um, if that rectifies the problem. That's a good time to just look at your um, new setup. Of course, just like you have been previously able to do, you can still customize your screen with your colors and your grid and just the general appearance of the screen. I generally work with mine with a white background for no other reason than that it makes just a better um, photo when I'm teaching and I need to capture the screen. Of course, at home, you can choose to use whatever color you want and you can change that whenever you want. I think it's sometimes a really good idea to see what your digitizing looks like on different colors. So, um, so you know, go ahead and play with that and make it just the way that you want it to be. Um, the, um, the other thing is down here, the tape measure. Now, this is really, really important that you actually get a rigid tape measure. So don't get anything that might have stretched over time, like a dressmaker's tape measure. Get something like a metallic or a, um, a good plastic ruler and lay it against your screen and then input the measurement that you see uh, so you're actually measuring this little wee tape measure thing and you actually put the measurement in. So that's that's really important. Another little hint, if you've decided to use a computer monitor, measure, uh, sorry, TV as a monitor, measure that on the diagonal because you might find that that, that measurement that we've got there won't work. Here we go, we can um, do all sorts of neat things in here. So we can go into our import tab and select how it's going to be imported. And here is our export tab. Now, here's the thing. You can set it all up here with your, your preferences that it will default to. But every time you go to export an embroidery, and I'll explain that process in a, in a little while, when you um, go to export your embroidery, you'll be offered all these options every time. And of course, it may be times when you don't want the software to automate, but automatically rather do things for you. Um, so all of these preferences are open to you all the time and you've got total control. Some of these um, will become more obvious to you when you start digitizing because you'll no longer be putting in jump stitches and tie offs and things like that. So some of these commands relate to the tolerances um, for that automation to happen. And so I just wanted to show you now quickly that you do have total control over all of those um, options. And that's what that one's about. Okay, there is a new way of looking at your, um, or finding your embroideries. We no longer have a module called 6D um, Organizer. So that's all gone now. Um, Windows 7 and Windows 8 supports different kinds of things. And one of those things is a thing called a plugin. You don't need to know what it is. You just need to know that what it does is it changes the way Explorer works. So the, the plugin that is installed when you've installed your 6D software actually interacts with Explorer. So that's Windows Explorer to change the way Explorer works so that it will now see thumbnails, for instance, of all your designs. So the way that you access that is you come down here to the bottom left of your screen, click on your, um, your folder icon. Um, so I'm working with Windows 8 on Windows 7, of course, it's up on your top toolbar. You're going to navigate through these um, menus just as you would normally. So there's no change there. When you come to actually the folders in which your designs are stored, you're going to be able to, I'm just having a little fiddle around here with some preferences while I'm talking to you, so disregard what, I'm, what you're seeing and only listen to my voice. Here we go, I think I'm ready now. So I'm just going to click on my 6D embroidery folder. That's going to open all my subfolders. Just This is just regular computer stuff, right? And when I come to samples, I'm going to show you in just a second how you're going to be able to view your embroideries. Obviously, you'll come up and you'll go to your view and you'll tell it that you don't want a list, that you actually want to see the images. So we're just going to do that now. And I've got, you know, small, extra large, large, medium, all of those choices. And as you can see, now I can actually see my embroideries without even opening my embroidery software. So just to reiterate, you don't have a module now for doing that. You're coming into your documents, 60 embroidery, and then locating the folder that you've saved your embroidery designs in. Um, in this case, I've just saved them into um, samples and so on. And here we go, you can see all of those designs right there on your screen. 
that's a big wow folks that's a really big wow because it's horrible working blind and hoping that you're saving the right thing to your USB stick let me take you a bit further into this if I right mouse click onto an embroidery I get a pop-up menu um, which you'd expect to see and here you can see I've highlighted 60 embroidery and I can send and I can do all sorts of things with it um, I can see you know where I'm going to associate my design to and so on and so as I come down you can just see all of those options coming open to you I come into my screen and I'm looking now at the print menu so I've right mouse clicked and I've selected print and you can see right here is where I control everything I'm going to print so I can control whether I see it in the hoop or whether I don't see it in the hoop and you know how many things per page and so on so again just the 60 really gives you total control over every element of your work um, and this organizer plugin is absolutely fantastic it's rocking it Here's just another way that you can actually look at your screen. So if you're wanting to look at it this way, you just set that one up in your um, in your settings so that you can actually see it previewed to the side. This is all just you know options that you have in Explorer all the time anyway, so that you'd be able to see the thumbnail and then you'd be able to see the expanded view. Um, and so this was also available now with your 6D embroidery software. We also have the ability to um, search and so here I can type something up in the search box and you can see that in just a moment the um, Explorer will find what it is that I'm searching for. Just a few issues there working with the um, keys on my HP. I, I've become so used to using my Apple now that um, going to a full size keyboard is it's kind of everything's over to one side. So forgive me for that. I'll just um, correct that and make that right now fingers on the correct keys always works much better when you're searching for something and here you go you can see that you can search right through your different um, so you can search by by words you can search by um, uh, um, the notes inside the software you know when you can save a note to your design for instance this lovely cross stitch was stitched for my mum in 2010 or, or whatever so you can actually search for any of those keywords that you've used, which is a wonderful feature. Okay, let's start some fun stuff. We're using 6D Design Creator, and I'm just going to use the wizard. I'm going to bring in just a little graphic that I've got in my um, demonstration toolbox here, and that's the one that I want. So I brought that one into my screen. And it's just um, a basic petal shape. Now, if you know me, you know I don't usually use any quick tools, but I'm going to do that in this case. Where we've landed um, our images in the paint window. So the first thing that we need to do is come over here on the right hand side and of course go across to our design window. Now something that it's um, useful for you to realize is that we no longer have an edit tab. So People, um, when I say no longer, I'm referring to people, of course, who've used 5D embroidery or 4D embroidery. Um, so for those of you who are new to the package, of course, you only know what you see. But for those of us who've used previous um, software packages written by these people from um, SVP software, um, you know, you won't be... Um, you won't be you'll be seeing this for the first time so uh, we won't be using our edit um, screen anymore because we don't have one um, so here we go I'm just going to um, you can see I, I've got my paint window so I can change the colors of that design if I'm wanting to I'm not going to bother to do that in this occasion so I'm just going to go straight through and go to my uh, create window typical of me I've gone and opened that up and I've um, forgotten to change the size of my hoop so I'm just going to change the hoop size um, down to a much smaller hoop because I don't need this jolly great big hoop with my little weenie graphic so just um, just a matter of just as you would have previously selecting the hoop appropriate for your machine and we've got all the different brands of machines in there so now I'm ready to just um, go across to my create tab and my create tab is just over here now I'll just come to my create tab and I'm just going to select a full um, a pattern fill and I want to have a border on this one 
and I'm just going to come to my options. All these tools are very familiar to anyone who's used 5D and I'm just going to create a fill pattern area. Nope, sorry, used the wrong tool. I'll just come to undo that one. Oops, a day. This is always a good idea to make a mistake the first thing. I wanted to create a hole in the middle, so I'll collect, I'll collect that auto tool and do that. And there is my petal with a hole in the middle. So there should be a song about that, I think. Petal with a hole in the middle. Okay, let's look at what is going to happen now because I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it. The duplicate has landed right on top of the original. In my film strip, you can see two objects on the screen. You see just one. I'm just going to select the second one to show you. See, there are indeed two copies here. I'll put that one back on top because it needs to be there. So I'm just going to just whiz it back over. Actually, I'll just go undo. That's much easier than making sure I get it lined up exactly right. Um, and the next thing that I can do is I can just right mouse click and I can change the color and I can just type in here whatever color I want. So I'm just having a little think, I think I'll just go for, I'll probably change this later on and you'll see it a totally different color later on, but I'm just gonna go for a sort of pinky color for now. And the next thing I want to do is I need to shift that so that the color changes before the second item. So I've just scooted that up my film strip which is pretty easy to do, just drag it up there. And now I'm gonna change the properties of this one because it's not, no, no point in doing two fills on top of each other. So I'm just gonna quickly come and take off the border. And I think I might just come and, you know, make it a, a sort of a running stitch type design. So I'll just quickly set up the preferences for that one. It's just so easy to change things. You know, there's no need to digitize things many, many times. You can just whack a copy and a paste and and uh, be ready to go and then just change the properties which is what I've done. I'll just go. I can move my um, move that away out of the way and I can actually go view so I can see now I've got a sort of a running stitch contour thing happening and then I can go okay and save that. So that's looking really good. I think it's about time I made this into an embroidery. So if I come to export I can set up all those preferences we talked about in that initial screen. I, I'm prompted every time to change anything that I want to do and everything is here so I can just make all of those changes that I want to and when I'm happy with it I can just go okay to close that one and okay and now I can just give my file a name and pop it into a sensible location I'm going to just open a folder for the things that I've done today so you'll see this folder pop up a couple of times so I just whack in a description with my really bad typing because I'm on a big keyboard instead of the little one <laughs> and we'll just give it a name Oops, and give it a proper name, and then we can go, okay, export. And so that's now saved that as an embroidery file. Okay, um, just want to show you that I can open another work area, and I'll end up with multiple work areas on top of themselves, which is a good thing to do. So here I am, I'm going to open a new work area. And of course my wizard pops up and I'm just going to cancel out of that because I want to show you, I'm so excited about this tool because it was on my wish, wish list to the developers and um, I'm just going to set up my, I'm going to be patient, just going to set up my uh, my fill pattern. So just give me a moment while I find one that I kind of like. I might just type something in down here, that'll do. I'll go okay. And... Um, change the angle of the stitches maybe, that's good, looking good, looking good, looking great, excellent, don't need to worry about those, go okay, and now, wait for it, I have a shapes tool, so having set up my, oh I'm just going to change my colour, sorry, sort of my hands are working faster than my mouth I'm sort of thinking what will I do what will I do I'm going to change the color so I've swung to my um, edit screen because that's where I, I can change the color that it defaults to so I'm just going to choose something a bit nicer than that so a nice purple will be good I'll come back to my create screen and now I have my I keep on going to tell you about this and then I keep getting interrupted because I just keep on thinking about things that I haven't set up so just um, bear with me for a minute because the ta-da ta moment is coming. 
so um, okay right should be just about ready okay so here we go it's a big moment have you ever had trouble digitizing a perfect circle a square an eclipse any of these shapes look at all these wonderful shapes that we now have hearts we have just everything I'm going to do an arrow for you with one click of a mouse did you see that happen that was an arrow just one click of the mouse I chose my shape I told it was a fill stitch and whammo there it is so um, I'm just going to resize that now and um, just check my patterns and so on I'm just not quite sure whether I like that one very much let me fiddle for a second and I'll be right back okay so the next thing that I want to show you is that I can resize this and I just have this little habit look at that I can just swing back to my edit screen hit the box and it box selects it there's other ways as well but that's just one of them and then look I can just drag that little thing down I can make it teeny tiny or I can make it really really big by see I'm just click, left mouse clicking on these these corner handles and I can just drag those whichever way I want them to be and so I can just make it longer and I can make it taller isn't that cool of course I'm using my um, grid lines just to give me a measurement here so I can make it you know just as big or as tall as I want um, but you know there's always clever people who find other ways of doing things and so not only can I drag this to make this the right size but there is another really clever way that I can make this the perfect size and so I'm going to show you that right now another way to make it the perfect size is to open your hoops and then actually come down here to the work area size and put in the dimensions that you want so 35 by 25 and go okay and your embroidery resizes when your hoop resizes and so I can make that the perfect size and then I can come back and now I'm not changing my work area this time I'm changing my hoop so when I change my hoop I'll just come down and select um, the one that I want and yep, good so when I change my hoop my embroidery stays the same size when I change my work area my embroidery resizes with it how cool is that okay I'm going to just copy that and I'm going to come down and open my quick link tool to my 60 extra and in my 60 extra I can just um, I just need to just set this one up just for a moment so I need to come here to um, to set up my hoops so I just come view and then hoops and then I'm going to choose um, my machine I prefer to do this by my machine because you know that way I know I've chosen the ones that I meant to choose um, choose my hoop and don't oh don't go cancel Michelle silly Billy um, go change your hoop again sorry about that folks must be nearly lunchtime I think uh, my machine, my hoop, yep. And this time go okay, that saves the hoop change, not not cancel. That would never work, would it? Okay, um, so I've got my hoop and now I'm going to uh, actually bring in um, my petal. So I'm just going to, you can see everything's changed in 6D extra. Doesn't that look just so neat and clean? So up the top here I've got a whole lot of different kinds of windows that I can open so don't think that you've lost tools you know chances are it's just switched to a different category it's in a different place than it was before so I'm just going to find my my uh, my petal so here's my beautiful petal that I created before I just changed my mind about the colors so just um, bear with me while I just have a muck around here with my colors kind of like mm, yeah maybe metallic thread would look quite good I, you know, I bet you I'm going to change this about it like a gazillion times over the course of today. But let's try this combination. So I'll go blue on blue. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Don't know. We'll, we'll stick with that one for now. Okay, now let me show you some things. I've got um, all my alphabets here. I can look at all my alphabets at one or just one at a time. And I just want to choose a particular alphabet. So I'm just showing you how you can see all other gorgeous. Now I have been told reliably that um, every one of these has actually been redigitized. So if um, if you weren't happy with a font in the past, I bet you're going to be happy with them now. They've all been completely redigitized for us. There's new fonts in there. Um, just wow. 
wow, how many fonts could a girl need? Look at all these lovely fonts. As usual, they're um, grouped according to like a category and a name and so on. Oops, that didn't quite, I meant to change that one. Let me just have another look. Nope, still not happening. Okay, tricky thing. I think I've got it. Okay, if I come here and choose, no, 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 no. So that's the one I want. And it's just not coming up for some reason. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just go through the individual menu and just find it there. Oops, there it was. So I can find it here. That's my, that's the alphabet that I'm going to be using. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's another way to do it. So if I choose something different and then come back to it, yeah, I think that that's the way to do it. So if you come down to your big one, if it's not letting you select it, select something else and then come back and click it again and then select the one that you did want. Okay. Now the reason for that is that one of them is set as the default and that was the one that had that shaded sort of... Um, caramel color there so here we go I've got the right font now and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, organize myself and I'm just going to basically what I'm going to do is set them so they're individual so I have um, a choice over here where I can have um, anything that I type in my typing area um, as um, as a collection like a word or I can have them as individual elements and as individual elements if I was typing the phrase say mother it would mean that all of the letters m-o-t-h-e-r were able to be edited separately um, so I could make the m super big compared to the rest of it this is a really really nice feature and I think that you girls would just love sorry girls and guys we just love being able to um, individualize it so you can change the position of them you can change the spacing of them and so on so chances are you're actually going to choose that tool quite a lot so that's just that tool that says um, individual up over here and then um, I'm kind of working backwards and forwards because I'm still getting used to the new out layout so um, once I've done that uh, so yep definitely got my my font selected so I'm just going to type two dots here and go apply and you can see my two dots have gone right in the middle of the screen down here to my zoom tool so they've changed place they're still there now you can see I'm moving them two together but each one has got a separate selection box around it and those selection boxes had a green handle just let me move to a, a clearer space so there we go I've just got one selected there now and I'm going to drag it up to the top of my petal and just leave it sitting there kind of sweet oops it's down there actually you know what I don't need to line it up exactly I'm just going to drop it there um, and then I'm going to grab the second one and pop it into the middle of my design so that's that big space that I've got now the reason why I didn't need to line it up exactly is that I've got an align tool um, I used my align tool a lot in 5d but I'm hearing around the room that some people didn't so you can just use your align um, your align function to make sure that everything aligns up you know with the center line horizontally vertically whatever so I'll show you that in just a moment but for now I'm just going to move this one here over so I'll just um, left mouse click on it again to select it and then I'm going to drag it into the middle of my space in my petal now here's a really nifty thing green handles on letters mean you can drag them to resize them you can, there's some so there's some things that will change that but green handles basically mean I can resize it so I can drag my full stop and make it into an eclipse type shape but again don't need to mess around with getting it all centered because it's going to do that job for me so I've just got my three elements kind of vaguely lined up there and I'm going to just I'm just sort of playing with my zoom sorry just for a moment I just kind of wanted to, wanted to get as close a view as I can and nope that hasn't worked too well I'll just to go up slowly. My zoom tool is quite um, quite sensitive so I'll just go plus 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 just down here. So all your zoom tools are all collected down in the same little area of the screen which is a really cool thing and I'm going to okay, okay, come across now to my home tab And in my home tab, of course, I've got different tools available to me and I can select all and then I can uh, 
uh, tell them to align. And naturally, I want them to align, you know, in a in a horizontal way. Isn't that cool? So they've just snapped into position. So now I'll go ahead and I'll actually we'll combine those now so that they're all saved as a single element or a single embroidery. And um, then I guess I better save it. So let's come and um, save my uh, design. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to encore it. So I'm going to make this petal into a flower. So I'm just going to come here and select a circle. I want to have, um, the, I don't want to have it mirror image, so I want it a standard. I'll just, I know that it's 12 repeats is going to fit because I kind of checked it previously. So this is like when I cooked earlier. And I just come here to, um, to this eye, the eye in the sky, and it's my preview eye, and I can see it, and then I can drag it, and I can drag them closer. But this is a wonderful new way of looking at your encores. So I can get them in exactly the right position, and when I'm totally happy with them, then I can go back up here, and I can go, yep, that's great. And it turns into my new, new embroidery. How cool is that? Now, I think that you could just stop watching this video and contact your nearest dealer straight away and just go ahead and purchase this software. Okay, you want more? I'll give you more. I'll flip it 45 degrees. Uh, those of you that are thinking of upgrading from 5G, I'll just remind you, you could only flip that 90 degrees previously. So a 45 is really, really good. All right, now, do you remember that I had that little arrow sitting down there on the, on the side of my screen? Let's just bring that up and see where we can put him. And I think that I'm going to need to rotate that. Yep, 90 degrees looks about right for what I want to do. And I'll come up to my encore. And I'm going to have a circle again. Still 12 repeats because I need this to fit into the, into the space. See, like that? And then I'm just going to be able to drag that down and nudge that into a position that I find pleasing. Are you impressed by this design? This is looking beautiful. What a gorgeous design I have created. And so I'm very happy with that position. And of course, I can just go up here and I can select apply because that is a great job well done. Oh, have you ever wondered what your embroidery looks like and you wish that you'd been able to see it? I've got great news for you, you can. And not only can you see it, you can see it in a way that you've never seen it before. I'll just come back to home and then I'll go to real life view. And those of you that have wanted to be able to do things in real life view, this is beyond any dream that you could have had. How would you like to be able to view your design from every possible angle? Look at that. How cool is that? That is a real well moment. So you can really get an impression of how good your design is going to look. Pretty remarkable, I'd say. Uh, I can do a few other nifty new things in this little uh, area as well. So I'm just having too much fun with that. I can put it there and leave it alone for a moment. And I will play with something else. I'll come across to my effects and I can actually uh, insert some effects here. And the, in the, the effect that I am going to um, put in is I am going to put in puffy foam. Now, those of you that don't know Puffy Foam, Puffy Foam is a particular product you buy from your local sewing machine store, and it um, gets put in at, and the stitches go over it, and it creates this 3D effect. It's kind of a relief, you know, you sort of get things standing out like that, isn't that? And you can see that the little circle, or the oval that I did, is kind of standing out now, so we can see that in this view. How cool is that? All right, I'm gonna ask you again. Go now and contact your local dealer and order this software because you will not be disappointed. This is absolutely fantastic. I'm just going to complete my design by whacking a little, um, an already existing embroidery into the middle. And I'll just scoot that up and into position. That design looks really cool. I must stitch this one out because I kind of like this one. And so there it is, send it in the hoop. How great is that design? It's pretty spectacular. I'll combine them all and save my design. And then I think that I might want to do one more thing to show you how cool this software is. Okay, so I've copied that design and you can see it down on my clipboard and I've decided to pop some quilting around it. So I've come into my wizards and I'm going to open my quilt block wizard. 
This is ideal for embroiderers who want to put quilting around their embroideries. I know many of my students are just going to be jumping with joy when they see this. I thought of a few other things I could say and none of them were suitable for a worldwide audience. So I'll just clean it up and say, Anne, if you're listening to this, you are going to love it. So here I come and I'm just going to choose the uh, all the kinds of quilting that I want to do um, and I'll bring in my embroidery and I'm, so I'm just working through this wizard it just really takes you through step by step by step and then I can see my quilting on it just change a couple of references there and there we go hi presto quilting around the embroidery and not only that, I can change the kind of quilting it is. So I can come in and I can use a motif stitch. I can use, you know, like the stippling or the crosshatch or any of those. I kind of like using the circles. I, I call these pearls and I kind of fell in love with them because I think all ladies should have pearls. And so I have pearls in my quilting quite often. And, uh, and so this is how it looks and it's really, it's very cool. Of course, I can change my size, but the hoop size, which has just fallen to the default. But I think Anne and everyone else out there watching that likes to quilt and embroider at the same time, you'll be buying the software just for this feature. So go ahead, stop watching the, the video, and rush to send your email to your nearest store, your nearest dealer, and order this order the software. Do yourself a favour. I'll just show you another quick little trick. I'm just going to quickly bring in a, I'm going to use um, the auto create tool. I, I never digitize this way, but I just want to show you how cool this is. So just going to come in and create an embroidery from this piece of clip art. So this is a little birdie. And so I've chosen my hoop, but I've also chosen the um, size of the clip art. And I'm just going to step through the wizard. A couple of things have kind of changed in this one. So here's all my colors. I'm just I've been figuring out how to take the background out, so just bear with me for one second. Okay, I figured it out. So I come here, and what I want to do is I want to pick the color of the background, so see the um, color of the background, and then I've told it that that's the color that I want to remove. So, um, so now it's taken that background away, and I can go ahead here. Now, of course, here I can put down a design underlay. I can choose whether I'm a woven fabric or whatever. And this is what my embroidery is going to look like. So just back on that screen because I flashed through it a bit fast. So you can actually use those drop downs to choose what kind of fabric you're going to stitch on. And the software will automatically generate sufficient stitches um, for the kind of fabric that you're going to be stitching on. So that's pretty cool. So the color comes here, just use the picker, tell it that you don't want the background. And hey presto, the background will disappear from your embroidery because we don't usually want the backgrounds in there from a piece of clip art. So here's my birdie and all the stitches have been created for me because I used the wizard that, that made that happen. But I can actually um, I can actually go through and just really simply edit this bird. So I'm just going to change some of the stitches and, um, and uh, just make it look a little bit you know, more exciting than just the stock standard stitch. So I just choose that element in my film strip and uh, right mouse click to open properties and then I can go ahead and I can put in whatever kind of stitch that I want it to be. So I finished editing my little birdie and now I'm just bringing them into this really neat real life view. Oh that is so cool, isn't that so cool? Birdie upside down. Okay Michelle, stop messing around with the birdie. Put him back where he belongs in the middle. And, whoops, there he is in the middle. And I'm just going to add some puppy foam to him as well. So I come to my effects and I add the puppy foam. Okay, I've finished messing around with my little bird and I've decided that I want more than one little bird. So I'm just going to flip him over using my flip handles and then I'm going to use my new Encore Wizard. And the Encore Wizard is going to allow me to get an equal number of embroideries within the hoop that I've selected. So that's basically what Encore means, to make an endless design or a design that repeats over and over and over again. So I'm just going to set that up and I want it to be a straight line. And um, I think that's about right.
and just like I did with my um, uh, with the encore, I just head over here to my eye in the sky, and I can I can move these around. You can see that they are all grouped together, and I can just move them as one. They're not actually set yet, you know, so it's not until I go apply that it's rigid and set. So I can just mess around with those. I can move them around the hoop. I can consider whether they're going to fit nicely onto whatever it is. Actually, whoops, lost it and then put it back again. Um, I'll just stretch them a little further apart, which is just a matter of stretching the, um, the whole group further apart, and then I can just go apply and you beaut, there's my embroidery. Um, so I'll just bring it down, and I think I might add some lettering to that embroidery. So I'll just come back to my letters tab, and um, I'm gonna just choose a whole lot of different fonts, I think. Uh, so I'll just choose one that'll do, and um, uh, type the word tweet. I get my fingers on the right keys, there we go, tweet, and we'll just uh, go apply. And that's one word, and we might just choose a different um, font. And of course I don't need to retype it, I can just go apply, and there it is again, tweet. Uh, I'll just choose another word, any, um, sorry, another font, keep on saying word, another font, any font will do, yep, that'll do, and apply, and another one. So many fonts to choose from, it's hard to decide which one to use. That one will do just fine. Now here is something really nifty that I discovered, because I can just have all four of those fonts, uh, so, sorry, all four of those words selected and then I can come to my uh, endless feature and still have them, actually I'll put them in a curve, it'll be look nicer in a curve I think and we'll just go and have a quick look at that one and get the spacing right and if I just go to my eye to have a look like I spy with my little eye mini tweeting word. Okay not quite the shape I meant, so I'm just going to stretch it longer and then I think I'll compress it to be shorter. So it's still got that sort of a bit of an arc about it and then move it up to about there and I can see straight away that's going to look a bit tweety and, and if I'm happy with it and that will do, I'll just go apply and hey presto, I've just made a really cute little embroidery. How do you like that? And of course I can go and I can have a little look at it again. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you um, on tonight's video is that um, everyone who buys 60 Embroidery um, Extra and 60 um, Premier gets um, Picture Stitch. Um, with Extra you only get the option of a black and white um, picture, um, but with, um, with uh, Premier of course you can work in colour and sepia and black and white. So I've just got this cute little flower that sort of came with the software and I'm just going to load him in using my um, picture stitch uh, wizard that creates an embroidery straight from a um, picture. See I can mess around with different kind of colour tonings and stuff like that. And just So just stepping quickly through the wizard now and I want it to be colour. Here I can work, mess around and I can um, sort of have the the photograph contained within a shape, so um, as you can see the shapes just change as I'm scrolling through there for you, um, and you can have um, the size you can change as well. So you can do all of that sort of in the wizard, but actually I'm just going to have it in a square and large. I don't need to crop it or anything like that, the crops are fine. The number of colours will drive me to mean to changing them all, but that'll be fine too. Um, so I just um, have a good look at it. and. Now don't be confused by this icon, it's not sending it to the machine, what it's kind of indicating is it's turning from a photo into stitches and now I have the option of adding frames and I don't want one. And so that's how my embroidery will look and there he is in my hoop looking absolute gosh dead gorgeous. Um, but I want to show you some cute little things that I can do with my embroidery. So I've, I'm, gonna, I'm going to quickly copy it so it's soon now it's down there on my clipboard quick link back to my 60 extra and in my 60 extra I'm going to open my quilt block wizard I just change my hoop size quickly before I do that much better hoop size okay so now I'm going to come to my wizard to my um, quilt block wizard and 
actually, you know, I think I might have to paint, put my picture in, so I'll just pop it in just in case. Come to my wizard, quickly work through all of the prompts to choose my embroidery lay, uh, sorry, my quilting layout. So we've, we've done this previously, you've had a little look at this before, but I just want to quickly whiz through it so that you can see how I can drop um, my quilting around a picture stitch um, embroidery. So I've just, I need to bring in my embroidery, which means I think I might have to go back and delete the embroidery I popped in my hoop, because otherwise I'm going to have it twice. So I'll do that in just a moment. So I'm just going to, um, so you can see I can have the, uh, the quilting going around the outline of the flower. Um, and I can change all of those preferences right here. And there's my stippling around it, but this time I'm not going to choose stippling. This time I'm going to choose um, something a little bit more elaborate. I'm going to come down here and um, gosh, what will I choose? So many choices, isn't there? I can go for a motif. Um, I can go for the cross hatching. I can just leave it at the stippling. Just too many choices. Okay, so I'm going to go for this echo quilting. Hey, doesn't that look gorgeous? And um, and hey, presto, there we go. My um, just quickly check my my options and that all looks okay just change my stitch length actually that that's 1.25 is so like really small and for this one because it's going around a, an embroidery I might just make it a double stitch I usually only use it single stitch because I want it to look like I free motioned it but I'm going to use a double on this one and that so there is my embroidery and when I go finish it lands in my in my hoop like that now remember I had that other flower on this so I'm just going to quickly delete that you, you didn't see me do that that was not there so there you go that is so much fun isn't it that's it folks i hope you enjoyed this sneaky look at 60 embroidery software remember to go to your local dealer to order your software and i recommend that you buy the box software rather than the downloadable one off the internet simply because it's just such a big file bye until next time